Thanks, Sean. Great turnout. I was a little worried about the turnout because of Nats, which is a great thing. Um, it's a great time to be a, to be in this area. Obviously, um, the Nats doing so well. The Mystics winning their uh, World Championship, and and um, our women are preseason top five, and they're saying good things about us. So it's a lot of fun. We just announced a new practice facility, which we're excited about, and uh, it's been a lot of work to this point. It's actually involved more last night, raising more money for it. So. Uh, a lot of great things. Um, excited about my team, obviously. Um, have a lot of good players on this year's team. We have some experience. Uh, I think about where we were last year at this time to where we are today. Um, where, you know, how our practices are going compared to last year at this time. Um, it's really nice. We have some really good experience. I'm really proud of my guys because, you know, last year we were we were extremely young, I think fourth or fifth youngest team in the country. We had a terrific year. But because of the way the season ended at the buzzer, to go to the Sweet 16 and have a chance to come back home and play in D.C., it's made our guys really hungry. And uh, I don't know if I've ever had a team work as hard as this team did from April until the start of practice, and it shows. So really proud of them. They're great leaders for the new guys. And um, very deep basketball team that we have. You know, I know you guys know about Anthony. He hit his head and leaked out uh, at concussion. He's he's back. He'll be full strength today uh, at practice. hasn't have, hasn't really practiced since last Monday. Did a little bit on Sunday, but today he'll have full clearance. So, it'd be great to get him back. And uh, we have our private scrimmage this weekend, so it's moving quickly. Uh, be here before you know it. So, with that I'll open it up for questions. Guys, we have mics on either side. If you can please raise your hand, state your name and publication, please. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. The Jacklin's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Mark, in the practices that you saw that Anthony was not available, did it give you an idea of, of how the team plays without him because he's so vital to this team? And, 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 and what did it show you? Well, we actually had four guys not practicing at one time. Um, and it showed me that we had incredible depth. And we were able to um, still have some really good practices during that stretch. Um, so that was exciting to me. And because of some of the injuries we had, just some older, I guess upper class, not upper class, but older guys, the guys that have been here, the young guys got a lot of reps. And um, that was really good for them. So um, we, added, we added a couple guys back this weekend. Practices got better. So um, it was good to see. I, I think it just showed me that we had great depth and we had a lot of really good players. And I think the best part was that the young guys just got much more reps than they would have got because of some of the guys not practicing. Uh, Coach, right here. Uh, Cordell from 105.7 The Fan. Uh, can you talk about some of the things that you wanted to see Sticks, who's not really looking like Sticks anymore, uh -huh. uh, work on in this offseason coming into this year? Yeah, so, yeah, I call them logs sometimes because it's <laughs> a little more Sticks. But, uh, you know, with, with Jalen, we wanted to continue to make him bigger and stronger, which he did. Um, I think he's up 35 pounds from when he's uh, set foot on campus. Uh, we really worked hard on him to score in a lot of different ways. Okay, So like, he's pretty good on the right block. He's pretty good catch and shoot three guy. Um, but we tried to do a lot of different areas on the floor. We played a ton of one-on-one -on -one, uh, since the season ended uh, to this point. Don't play as much one-on-one -on -one when practice starts. Uh, really worked on his perimeter defense. He played a lot of one-on-one -on -one with Anthony. Um, 
his perimeter defense got so much better as the year went on last year. It was all new to him. And now I'm very confident um, in his perimeter defense and what he can do. And then post defensively, he struggled when he had to guard five last year. <clears throat> Hopefully the weight helps. Hopefully the experience helps. Uh, we'll guard a little bit different on the post this year with him. Bruno was such a terrific post defender for us. Um, so, you know, we're going to play Jalen at the four and the five for us um, this year. And, uh, but a lot of things we worked on. I think he really improved his game. And I think just confidence, you know, just continue to grow with confidence and feeling comfortable um, being out there. <coughs> Coach Peck on the Tech Sports Report. Um, last year, anytime you guys needed a spark, it seemed like Bruno would come up with a, a block or a dunk. It had a very, you know, emphatic, emphatic mannerisms about it. Trying to get the crowd like the team, like who, who on the team you see uh, being that Clay manager, being that energy guy that could get the team going when you know maybe a slow start happens or, or a run by the other team. Um, I don't know if we have anybody like Bruno that's gonna, you know, be so emphatic and playing to the crowd. Um, but we have a lot of really good players. And um, Bruno was a tremendous shot blocker. And he covered up a lot of our, our mistakes last year. That said, Sticks is a pretty tremendous shot blocker in his own right. Um, Ricky Lindo's game has really improved. Uh, he can protect the rim. The Twins, um, they do a great job of protecting the rim. And then hopefully eventually down the road, we're going to get Shoal. Uh, back. So I think around the rim, we're going to be really good again, um, especially as the season goes on. So, um, but I don't know if we'll have that guy. I really don't. Um, Aaron Wiggins is probably the most outgoing guy uh, that we have. I, he's great for us in public when he goes out and does things um, in the community. He's terrific. A little more shy on the floor, um, but uh, he might he might be that guy. We'll see. Coach Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. Anthony Cowan's back for his senior year in a, in a world where not a lot of guys who play the minutes that he does over his first three years come back for that senior year. What sort of luxury does that give you, and what do you expect from him this winter? Well, you know, in a world where it's not, it's not great to, to become a senior, uh, I'm really proud of Anthony. Maybe he can make it cool again uh, to do it. Um, Anthony came back to win. Uh, Anthony's done a lot of things with scoring points and steals and assists, uh, but his, his legacy, he wants his legacy to be winning and winning at a high level. And he knows he'll be remembered more if our team wins at a high level. So that's why Anthony came back. He's, as he said, unfinished business. Um, I think Anthony's just got to trust his teammates. I think he realizes he has a terrific group around him. He set out. Now, he wasn't around much, uh, but he was here for two practices, and I think he realized that he has really good teammates around him and that he just needs to let the game come to him and make guys around him better. So that's the thing. You know, I asked the guys that have been here for several years, and they brag about his leadership off the floor, and he's become a much better leader. He's got so much experience. That's been good. And he's been a better leader on the floor. Anthony's not natural for him to talk, but he's been a much better leader. So. I expect Dan to have a great year. He's shooting the ball better than he's ever shot it um, here. Uh, last year at times he would throw it instead of shoot it. Now he's really shooting the ball at a high level. Uh, he's very confident. He put on about 10 pounds of muscle. I wasn't as high on it at first when he was talking about doing it, um, but it's made him really athletic, even more athletic. He's always been fast, but now he can actually dunk the ball pretty easily um, for a short guy. So. Uh, He's worked hard. He, he put in a lot of time this summer. Patrick's here, right? Mark Patrick Stevens with The Athletic. Uh, you mentioned the depth a little bit earlier. Do you think this is your deepest team since you've been here? And do you think this team has a higher ceiling than any team you've had since you've been here? Um, I would probably say it's my deepest team, but we haven't, you know, we haven't played a game yet. So we'll see. Well, you know, I think, um, you know, it's like, I think two or three guys have separated themselves as great players, and I think Three through 11, they're kind of all the same, but they're all really good players at four through 11. And so that's great depth. I think there'll be times in games this year where we sub and we get better. And that's not always hasn't been the case. So there'll be times when we sub and we don't get better, but hopefully we can maintain where we are. So there's been the last couple of years we sub, we're just 
holding on, you know, just, oh my gosh, we're up six, try to keep it at six, but now we sub back in, it's tied. So I don't think that'll be the case this year. Um, and hopefully our depth will help us stay fresh throughout the year. You know, it's a long season, uh, a lot on their plate, and uh, hopefully our depth will allow us to stay fresh and, and be a better team come, you know, February and March. As to the potential of this bunch, what's the peak potential? Yeah, you know, we'll see. Um, if they continue to be coachable, um, you know, they continue to be selfless, put the team first, th th those two things are really important. Talent-wise and depth-wise, yeah, we got a chance, but if they're – if they're coachable and they're selfless, then you know we'll, we'll get, continue to get better and we'll, we'll do some great things. How much you uh, Kind of going off of Dave's Anthony question, but a little more in the off the court sense. Have, have you guys had any conversations with him about what you expect from him, what he expects from himself in terms of who he is for this team, whether that's body language or kind of some of those things we've talked about with him? Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think. Have we sat down in the last month and talked about those things? No. I think April through the summer we talked about it a lot. Um, you know, and I think he gets it in, in where he is. Anthony's he's a smart kid. He, you know, he graduated in three years here. He's in graduate school now, which is amazing in itself. Um, but he knows why he's back and what he has to do. And for Anthony, it's all about winning. It's, it's all about winning. And um, you know, he won, a, he won the uh, WCAC championship as a senior. It was a great, great win for them. They beat a, a really good team in the championship. And he knows what that did for his legacy in high school. And so he knows that he has to do all the things to help us win games this year and put the team first in all those areas. And he wants to be rem remembered as a winner. And, uh, and that's why he's back. So. He's focused on that, and it's 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 good. Uh, it's good for our team, and good for the coaching staff, and <clears throat> should be good for the fan base too. So uh, he knows. Uh, we continue to talk on it, uh, body language, um, all that stuff. You know, it's an everyday deal. It's like shot selection and getting guys to defend every day. And you know, it's if you've raised kids, it's just like it's an everyday deal. So we'll we'll stay on it, and hopefully he'll have better days, more better days. Peter Schmuck, Baltimore Sun. Mark, obviously the team's getting some national attention, expectations are rising. Um, from, from a personal standpoint, you're in your ninth season, um, are, there, are there moments where you go from, we think we can be really good, we think we can go far, to I better go far, we better be really good? No, I don't ever think that way. Um, I do think we have a chance to be really good. and. Um, because I know what those freshmen did last year. I don't like to call them freshmen, and they're all back. And what they were able to do last year, I know they had Bruno uh, with them, but it was amazing what that, that team was able to do last season. I think we played the eighth toughest schedule in the country, too. So that gives you a lot of confidence as a coach. Um, you just do the best job you can. And um, you coach them, you coach them hard, and um, you know, but this this team is not only a talented team, but it's a pretty, really smart basketball team. They pick up things quickly. Um, they have a good feel for the game. There's just a lot of things that make you feel good as a coach. So, yeah, I want it to be a great year. You know, I want it to be a great year. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We, we expect it to be a great year. We're planning on it being a great year. Um, we hope to improve as the season goes on. We hope to be playing great. At the end of the year, you know, hopefully it works out that way. But that's what we're trying to do. And, but you know, I don't sit around here all day and think, ah, oh, I don't think national championship every day. Like today, all I'm thinking about is we got to get better in our half court defense. You know what I'm saying? It's just like that's kind of the way you approach it. But um, we expect to be good. Andy Tula. Hey, Coach uh, Andy Cuskin from the Dive Back. Uh, thinking back to that 2015 team, and obviously the roster makeups are much different. Between then and now, but what did you learn from coaching that team, and has that influenced anything you've done this offseason with, with coaching her? Yeah, that, just two totally different teams. Um, I think I think this I think we're embracing the expectations much better than that team did. That was kind of new for us. We, you know, we had a great year the year before. I think we won 28 games, and 
lost to go to the Sweet 16, and then all of a sudden we're preseason one, two, three, whatever the polls were. So uh, it was quite a significant jump from two years before when everybody was leaving, and you know, and then within 12 months you're preseason top whatever. So uh, I think we're more prepared for it. Um, it comes down, it just comes down to coachability, and comes down to chemistry, and guys just you know being selfless because if we if we do that. Um, then we'll continue to get better. And if we're playing for each other, you know, then we, we're going to be really good. And if egos get in the way, then we're not going to be quite as good as we should be. So guys know that. Um, we're in the process of building all that. You know, it's still early. Um, last week the guys were just trying to survive the first week of practice because it was pretty tough. And you know, this weekend we're getting together. And, having some meetings and we'll start talking about all those things a little bit more. Lila Bromberg. <clears throat> I'm Lila Bromberg, just zero times. You talked about last year how well he wasn't a guy who played Andrew Terrell was a big you know, kind of leader for the team and getting morale and things like that. But the guys who, you know, don't play as many minutes have you seen some kind of step up and go, you know, those ones? Well, I think Josh Tamayich is really going to fill that role this year. Uh, I mean, Josh's fourth year. Um, Josh had a terrific summer. He was a great leader. Uh, we have a lot of post players that are young, um, and he did a terrific job with them this summer, taking a little bit of pressure off sticks, having to do that, Jalen having to do that. So, um, but Josh would be my, would be my guy um, that I would think would do that. Um, you know, Travis and Reese are two guys that are terrific basketball players. They could be playing a lot of places in the country and playing a lot of minutes. Um, They'll have a role too, but I, I think Josh will be that guy. I think he'll be that guy that, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with playing time, but I think his leadership will be important for this team because he's seen it and been there. He's been on good teams. He's been on bad teams. Not so good teams, I guess. We haven't had any bad teams. Not so good teams. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Adam Zalaka with the Washington Times. Uh, since the freshman class has gotten on campus and, and you've begun practice, what are you able to say about their work ethic so far, how they're fitting in? and on a similar topic, um, is there any update on the recovery of Chol and yeah. Ariel from his surgeries? Yeah. So the new guys, um, very talented, very physical, uh, and good feel for the game. Um, still learning how to practice hard every day, still learning how to do all that stuff, compete at a high level the importance of every possession, the importance of ball screen defense every time, doing it right. You know, things like that, it's going to take some time, but a very talented group. Um, they fit in well. Our guys really like them. Upperclassmen really like them. They give us tremendous depth. What they do give us is they give us some physicality. You know, we weren't the most physical team in the world last year. A lot of it was our youth. Um, but these guys are built pretty, pretty, pretty well. So uh, our practices are much more physical and they need to be for us to play at the highest level. So uh, that helps. Um, good players. I couldn't tell you today who's going to play or play more or not play, all that kind of stuff, because it's still early. But um, a couple guys are starting to separate themselves a little bit. Um, but the physicality's there. Shoal will uh, be six weeks on Wednesday, but we had the six-week update yesterday with the doctor. Um, the x-rays look good. Uh, the rods look good. He feels good. Still has a little bit of swelling in the knees. Um, so he's lifting, he's shooting, he's doing some things on the floor. We'll do another appointment on November 25th. That'll be three months. And um, we're hoping on that day he gets clearance. Um, but I think over the next six weeks, if the swelling goes out of his knees, um, he'll just do more and more. But everything's like, I guess you call it flat foot base or his feet can't leave the ground in anything that, that we're doing, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's on the court. And it'll stay that way until the swelling out of his knees is gone. But he's doing terrific. And the doctor couldn't have been happier uh, with where he is. And he feels much better than he did before surgery. John C. Ray. John Martin's Baltimore son. Uh, just to build up that question, when you have, a year ago, you, you sort of had to play just by numbers the freshman. Now you can pick spots where, where they fit in, rotations, everything like that. How much, in terms of, as a coach, how, how um, much more 
uh, relaxing? You know, are, are you more relaxed coaching with, with a group like this where you don't have to play them as opposed to sticking them in maybe when they're not quite ready yet? Well, they think they're going to be playing 40 minutes but um, a game. But, uh, no, the thing that's great about this year's team, which could be if we continue to grow and get better and stay healthy, um, is that I'm in control. Guy doesn't box out, he's coming out. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we have so much depth that they're going to learn by sitting um, a little bit. Sometimes, last, you know, we had played, last couple of years, I played guys through mistakes, turnovers. There really wasn't an answer. Um, and I think we'll get better because of that. Guys will correct things quicker because of that. Um, so that's a good feeling. Not having to play them, yes, that's a good feeling. Um, I think we hit it pretty well. How nerve wracking it was last year playing guys. I, I went back and watched every game when I was traveling, recruiting the last month or so. Wow. I mean, it was like we were so young and um, what the guys were able to do. And now those guys are really grown men to me now as sophomores and they'll help us. But um, yeah, our depth is going to really help me teach. And if they're not doing it right, uh, they'll learn by sitting and they'll, they'll, they'll correct it pretty quickly. Last one, please, Wayne. Matt Wayne Viner, Turp Talk. With Matt Brady in his second year on the staff and DeAndre Haynes in his first, what have those two brought to the program and how have they helped the team develop? Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of great staffs uh, over the years. I think it's my 22nd year as a head coach. You know, I don't want to make anybody mad as work for me, but I think this is my best staff. Um, you know, I got Mark Biakowski who's been with me. He's tremendous in his role. I got Greg Manning who's way overqualified for his role, uh, but just works his tail off. Got great GAs, but Matt Brady is an excellent basketball coach. Um, has a great feel, loves to teach, loves to be in the gym. Um, you know, he's been terrific. And I just think DeAndre just came in and, and um, called him the young guy at 35 on our staff. and. Players love him. I love being around him. And uh, he's a great teacher. Him and Coach Brady are coaching the guards. And uh, they'll do a great job with them. Uh, they both like to be in the gym. So, like, we get 20 hours a week to practice. I'll probably use 14 or 15 hours of practice and film work. So that's another, you know, three or four hours that they can work before and after practice with these guys uh, and make them better. So. It's great staff, and um, you know, hopefully it'll pay dividends for us as the games come along. Okay, thanks, coach. All right, thank you.